In any electrical gadget, we need some sort of visual indication to know whether the system is working or not. Let's take the example of uploading a code to an Arduino. What if all the LEDs are removed from the board? It would be nearly impossible to find whether the board is working or not just by looking at it. Over a century, visual indication of electronic devices developed a lot from CRT to super amyloid displays. Let's play something in this smartphone display. Did you notice something weird? The word display? Is it meaning not to play? But it's playing something which isn't actually playing. The sole purpose of this video is to understand how basic LED displays work and also build a 8x5 LED matrix which fetches data from internet and display some useful information. So without any further delay, let's get started. We'll divide this video into two parts. The first one will be making the LED display and the second one will be fetching the data from the internet using ESP8266 LED matrix. I'm not sure if this is really going to be interesting as a real matrix, but this is the logic which we are going to use in our display. The basic understanding of matrix is nothing but arrangement of items in rows and columns. That's exactly what we are going to do. Place 8 LEDs in 8 columns of 5 rows with a total of 40 LEDs and connect all the cathode in a row in series and connect all the anode in series in every column. Let's see how this helps. Now you can turn on and off each individual LED by connecting the ground to row and positive input to the column. You may ask what's the difference? This just reduces the number of pins consumed by the microcontroller. If we go by non-matrix method, we will end up using 40 pins and unfortunately we just have 21 pins including both analog and digital in our nano. You may think the problem is sorted out, but no. Let's see why. When you try to turn on row 1, column 1 LED and row 2, column 4 LED together, you can see you end up turning on 2 more LEDs. This undesired output can be fixed in the software part, which we'll be looking at the later part of the video. In the code, we want our LEDs to glow when the input from both the sides of the LED be high. When you try this now, the LED doesn't work because there is no potential difference for the electrons to flow from one side to the other. So we'll use a transistor where the LED is connected to the collector of the transistor and the emitter is connected to ground and the base of the transistor to the Arduino pins. So now when you set this both these pins to high, the LED works as we expected. Now let's put this in our circuit and connect a 100 ohm resistor to the base of the transistor to control the current. Now the only thing remaining to finish the display is to connect the Arduino itself. The connections are made according to the circuit diagram given in the description. There are two ways to check whether all the LEDs are working fine. First, let's do the manual method. Remove the microcontroller, place positive end on one row and a positive end on one column and ground to ground. This should light up one LED. Keep the row constant and checking through the columns. This might be a hectic way of doing it. So let's do this in a different way by using the microcontroller. Place the Arduino back and upload the given test code given in the description and power it on. All the lights should light up one by one and the program should restart. This code is not fancy. It's just two for loops which turn on row by row while turning on each column with a delay of 200 milliseconds. That's it. So the circuit is built. Let's see how to solve the problem we had earlier, the undesired LED glow. There are two ways to overcome this problem, which you can use depending on the driver circuit and the number of LEDs in your circuit. First method is turning on each LED and scanning through all the LED column by column and row by row. If you do this fast enough, it will look like a static picture. The other method is to turn on each column and scan through all the columns. By doing this fast, we can produce the same result. But we are going to use the first method since we are drawing power directly from the microcontroller. Now let's look at the code. This is not the most effective way of coding this circuit. You can use port manipulation and advanced Arduino programming to make it more elegant, efficient and faster. To keep it simple, we'll just go with the basics. 
First let's tell the Arduino what are the pins we are going to use as rows and columns. Then we'll declare and initialize few arrays to hold the letters and numbers. To create a character, use ones and zeros in a matrix form, which tells the Arduino to turn on the LEDs which should be on and which should be off. Let's see this with an example of the letter A. And similarly, we can do this for all the character as we need. Now in setup function, let's tell the Arduino to make all the pins which we are using to be an output pin. And in loop function, let's make three loops. One for hold, this tells how long the character should be visible on the display. One for row, this tells the Arduino which row should be on. And finally the inner loop for the column, which tells the Arduino which column should be on. To turn on and off the LED, we'll use the digital write function. The first parameter is the pins, which should be on and off and the second parameter to tell the pins whether they should be high or low which is nothing but 1 or 0. We'll use the array which we created previously to turn on and off the LEDs accordingly. That's it. Just compile and upload. It's done. You can do the same with any letters and words. If you want you can download the code from the github and modify which should be a lot easier and have some extra features. Here you just have to add the string you want. To change the effect Either use the scroll function or the page function. As now we have a fully functional display. In next video we'll move on to fetching the data from few APIs and let's display on this matrix. So if you guys have any doubts you can comment below. If you like the video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video. You can also support this channel by sharing this content with someone who is interested and feel free to follow me on Instagram and check out my blog for a written version of the videos I make. So that's it for this video. You can watch other interesting videos from the link in the screen. As always, see you guys later.